What is up guys, my name is The Judge Prime, welcome to another album review. Today we're talking about Nigerian rapper Eva Alodia's 1960 The Album album. So um, Eva Alodia, like I said, Nigerian rapper, someone who I was introduced to rather early on. Basically someone who I was a fan of, who I felt had an extraordinary lyrical ability. For one reason or the other, her album was delayed, but the album is finally here. She chose a rather unconventional method of um, releasing her album. You can also make money through selling the album. You make about 20%. I don't think anybody should do that. I think all the proceeds should go to the artist because they work so hard to make this. So if you buy the album, you know, the album obviously you get the songs and you also get a book and you get a number of um, other tracks sort of thanking you for purchasing the album. I'm surprised that this album isn't getting that mainstream push, it isn't getting this kind of hype or buzz around it. Now I understand that m some of that might come due to the fact that this album has been delayed for so long. The meaning behind the title 1960 is representative of independence and individuality. She notes that 1960 is the year Nigeria got its independence and it's also her mother's birth year her mother being a very instrumental part of her life and also a very central figure throughout the course of this album. This album, I would say, sounds very rebellious. It sounds very reflective. It's also very emotional. Production on this album is handled by Gray Jones and Tintins. I think they did a phenomenal job on this album. They did some exceptional production throughout this album. Now going into the actual tracks on this song, it opens up with a track titled TTMB, that talking to myself bullshit, basically sounds like, you know, a very nice, very dark, eerie introduction to the album. Eva is welcoming you to the freak show that you're about to witness, and you know, it sounds like there are a lot of voices in her head, and it has a very gripping and enticing bass. I'd say it's a nice introduction to this album and it sort of gives you a feel of what you'll be getting with this album. Very dark and very eerie. The second track, Mbali, I googled the meaning of Mbali and apparently it's a Zulu word for flower and it's a traditionally a uh, female name. Now this song consists of a lot of chants. The instrumentation on this song is characteristic of, you know, South African music. It has a very immersive feel, but at the same time it feels very vast, very open. This song is very emotional, very reflective. And, and it kind of sounds a bit depressing, you know, she talks about how she was on the come up and how nobody really took her seriously and now people are like, you know, they want a slice of the cake. The things we hold on to don't even make us feel good. Essentially, we should just let go of the past, let go of things that aren't very constructive to our lives. Track 3, Deaf and Dumb featuring Olamide and Sakodi. This is sort of a reworking or a remix of her track Deaf, which is also featured on this album as a bonus. You know, it sounds more traditionally Nigerian. Something I noticed listening to Olamide's verse was there were little pauses here and there. I don't know if they were like censoring things that Olamide said or I don't know what the effect or what they were driving at with that. I found it a little bit irritating, especially as I listened to this album quite a few times. I would say that the features on here are decent. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Sakodi, but it was still decent. It was still good. It was still enjoyable. Moving on to track four, For My Mama. Like I said earlier, her mother plays a big feature on this album. She talks um, at length about her mother. And basically on this track, she's saying, you know, I'm doing all this to get a house for my mother. I could care less what you haters are saying. I could care less what everybody else is saying. I'm just gonna hustle so that I can provide for my mother. There's a very nice blend between the more traditional hip hop sound and also infusing traditionally African sounds on this song. Track five, Kanayo featuring Fino and Reminisce. More upbeat track, more club friendly, very entertaining nevertheless. And you know, the production on here is quite detailed. Like I said with the production, um, Great Jones and Tintins, they did an amazing job on this album. The production throughout this album felt, you know, like a very nice blend between a lot of things. It wasn't trying to sound too Western, at the same time it wasn't trying to sound too African. It sort of in its own way created its own lane. I think Eva did a good job on this, but like I said, I don't know why, but it felt like she wasn't exactly in the music. 
and I felt like her bars could have been a lot heavier, a lot stronger. It felt like she sort of explored her more melodic side rather than her rapping side, which is perfectly fine. I just, you know, was a huge fan of her raps, was, you know, very enticed by her raps when she first came out. So I would have liked to see, you know, those very witty, very, you know, hard hitting bars. On the song Yaba, it's another more reflective track talking about what are you going to do when you graduate? Are you going to be working a job nine to five? And she doesn't want to be stuck in that, you know, everyday cycle. So she had to hustle. She reminisces about, you know, people or on-air personalities or radio DJs who said, you know, you have to pay 450000 for them to play her songs on the radio or on their show, putting herself on without being on a label. So this album, like I said, you know, focuses heavily on Eva's story, you know, it talks about her mother. It also talks about young ladies and sort of serves as an, as an empowering tool to young ladies, sort of, you know, empowering young ladies to be comfortable with themselves, to be strong and, you know, to pursue their dreams. I think this album, you know, blends nicely with a lot of things towards the, you know, track seven, track eight-ish. It sort of takes a more dance hall or maybe you could say reggae vibe, but that's, you know, it doesn't feel like she's trying to do too many things. It just feels like it's trying to keep it varied throughout the album on the track nine woman featuring femi kuti you know and um being a fella fanboy myself i enjoyed this track you know basically talking about how women take care of everybody care for everybody the track 12 tell me which i liked because it has a very nice blend of sounds sort of interpolates you know sounds which are more traditionally associated with the northern part of nigeria and especially being someone who is of that heritage i appreciated that you know, even though Eva on this track, I feel sounds a little bit weak. It sounds like she's a bit overshadowed by the instrumentation or production on this track. But nevertheless, it is a good track. And then it closes off with track 13, Death, which is sort of a bonus. The album in general, I would say was quite cohesive. It did a good story. It did a good job at telling Eva's story. It did a good job at highlighting, you know, topics such as feminism and you know the importance of her mother i would say that even though eva's bars sound a little bit weak she was able to explore her melodic side and it did come out well the production on here is phenomenal like i've said throughout the video and it's a good debut album um maybe she might continue with the music i don't know she sort of hinted at going more into writing and certainly her book isn't bad you know the stories on there are rather compelling like i said but yeah this album i feel was worth the money and time i spent on it and you know certainly she gave a lot of effort and emphasis on the fact that she appreciated everybody who purchased her album. So I would say, you know, go out and purchase this album and give it a listen. I'll leave a link in the description below. Please be sure to check it out. If you're a fan of hip hop, a fan of, you know, female MCs, give this album a listen. If you're a fan of, you know, women who empower other women through their music, also give this album a listen. If you want to get a general story or you're Eva fan and you're sort of uneasy, I will say if you're a fan of Eva, definitely give this a listen. I think it will be worth your time. I would say personally in my own rating, I'd give this a 7.5 out of 10. But yeah, be sure to tell me what you think of this album. Have you given it a listen? You know, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you're new around here, why not click subscribe? My name is Judge Prime. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.